Hi guys, Alan Pierce, School Back Tech Tips. We're talking about regulators freezing. We have, Kevin and I have made videos about regulators freezing, or not freezing as the case may be, to keep them from freezing, what to do, and all that kind of stuff, several times. But we still get comments about it, so let me make one more clarification. Right off the bat, let me tell you that there's no way to guarantee a regulator will not freeze. Every regulator ever made, I promise you, I can make it freeze without doing anything stupid, without opening it and dumping water in it or something stupid. I can make that regulator freeze. There's no way to guarantee that it won't freeze under the right environmental conditions, meaning cold weather. But there are many, many things that you can do to reduce the likelihood pretty much almost to zero. I want to read something, and this is from my regulator manufacturer. People ought to know what they're doing, right? In the case of dives in cold water temperatures below 10 degrees centigrade, which is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, an actual fact, uh, generally speaking, we, we suggest that if it's colder than 40 degrees Fahrenheit, then it becomes critical. Uh, they recommend using a tank supplied with a valve for each and two separate outlet ports to which two complete regulators can be connected. Why would they want you to have two complete regulators underwater? Well, because, as I just mentioned, it's very, very likely that one will freeze. And the only solution, if that happens, is to switch to another regulator. It's virtually impossible. Once a regulator freezes and starts to free flow, virtually impossible to stop that. Can't stop it. Lots of people try, it doesn't work. The only having two regulators. But let me read this. Whenever the temperature is colder than that, here's what you should do. One, protect the regulator from any accidental water inflow into the first and the second stages. Absolutely. You want no water in the first stage. Water in the second stage is a different story. It's very difficult to keep water out of the second stage, by its very nature, there is water in the second stage in most cases. Not terribly important, I'll come back to it. Number two, protect the equipment from cold before diving, keeping it in a warm, dry place. When we had did ice dives, and I did hundreds of ice dives, with hundreds and hundreds of divers who became certified ice divers after they finished the course and did the ice dives, and uh, what we used to do, we insisted that they keep their regulator in their car with the car running and the heater on 10, <laughs> full blast, and keep the equipment warm. Put the rig right down on the floor, right where the heater's coming out. Keep all that, and the air tank too. Some people forget about that. To put the regulator inside, but to put the tank in the trunk. Tank should be kept warm as well, if possible. Number three, avoid breathing through the regulator. Absolutely. We had a very simple technique. You put the regulator on the tank and then slowly turn the air on, put it on your back, get into the water, and when you're all set, you take a big breath from there, <gasps> then put the regulator in and down you go so that the very first thing that happens once you're underwater is you exhale. Yeah. And then you're still sinking, so maybe you're down five, six, seven, ten feet. That's your first inhale. First inhale is underwater. As it says, avoid breathing through the regulator or pressing the perch button. Okay? Number four, avoid taking the mouthpiece out of your mouth and in the water. Don't take the mouth, don't take it out if you can avoid it. Shouldn't do it anyway. But try not to take it out if it's cold, cold water. As far as possible, avoid consuming large amounts of air during the dive. That would be like pressing the perch button or or giving your octopus to your buddy. I mean, you have to do that if you have to do that, but don't do it for fun. Don't, don't be breathing a whole bunch and laughing about it. Don't breathe any more air through the regular than absolutely necessary. So that's the recommendations they have. Now, some of them are straightforward. Of course, you don't want your regular to freeze. Don't let water in it and keep it warm before you jump in the water. But let me explain something a lot of divers don't get. When your regulator freezes, how do you know it freezes? That's very simple. It free flows, like it free flows violently in some cases. Air is coming out, and you can't, air is blowing out, and you're looking for your buddy and trying to hold the regulator. That's what it's like. It can be very upsetting if you're not used to it. This is something you can practice. Now, you can't practice in a pool freezing your rig, but you can practice by pushing the push button in as hard as you can, and that's what it feels like. Lots of air is coming out, right? What's happened? What has caused that? And everybody says, well, my second stage is free falling. My second stage froze. No, your second stage didn't freeze. Second stages don't freeze. Actually, regulators don't freeze. They're made of brass and plastic and stuff like that. That stuff is already frozen. It doesn't freeze anymore. What freezes? The air freezes. Actually, it's the water in the air that freezes. I see exactly what happens. 
if you go back to some of our previous videos, I'll get you, you should go back, if this, is, if this is interesting, go back. I'll get Kevin to put a couple of links on there. Go back to our previous videos, and in them I explain that it's not the regulator freezing, it's the water, the moisture in the air that is freezing. If it gets below 40, now, how, uh, hold on a minute, I thought water froze at 32 or zero Celsius. What's this below 40? Uh -huh. That's where it gets interesting. Again, go back to the old videos and read about adiabatic temperature drop. Adiabatic, it's in there, just the way it sounds, look it up, adiabatic temperature drop. It's very simple. When the pressure drops air, when the pressure drops, it gets cold. Let's make it really simple. When the pressure drops, it gets cold. The pressure in your tank is 3,000 psi, and it drops to 150, roughly 150 intermediate pressure before it goes to your mouth. It drops from 3,000 to 150. That's a big drop. So every <laughs> psi that the pressure drops makes the air coming through colder, and it doesn't take very long, particularly with large volumes of air, lots of air, big drop, big drop in temperature. The moisture in the air freezes. It may not be anywhere near 32 or zero, and it freezes, that's right. Okay, there's a thing called dew point. You can look that up as well. You've got to read it about dew point and adiabatic temperature, and you understand that in the first stage, as the pressure drops, which it does, that's what it's there for, the temperature also drops. And if there's moisture in the air that you're breathing, that moisture will freeze and there's a little wee tiny seat in the first stage. There it is. It drops down in there. You can't see, and I don't think, Kevin, can you get in there? Can you see down inside that hole and that little tiny seat? Every time you take a breath, that seat comes up and air goes through it. Temperature drops. And then the water in the moisture in the air freezes. And that little seat gets a tiny bit. It doesn't take much, probably microscopic to start with tiny bit of ice on it so when it goes back down it doesn't seal so now air free flows so the pressure starts to rise as the pressure rises more air freezes the moisture more freezes it gets worse and worse until pretty soon this first stage i've seen them covered with a coat of ice they're so cold first stage not the second stage so it's not shutting off the air supply so all that extra air runs right through the hose into your second stage and you get a massive free flow and it feels like your second stage is frozen, but it's not, it's the first stage. What do you do about it? Well, those recommendations, they've left out one, which I'll deal with. Don't, you keep, keep it warm before the dive. Don't press the purge button, don't breathe through it. Don't breathe high volumes. And let me add, do the best you can to get the driest air possible. Here in Canada, in Ontario, we have very, very dry air because we dive in very, very cold water in the wintertime. The water is freezing pretty much. And so our air is particularly dry. It's not uncommon to find the dew point, that's that temperature in which that moisture in the air freezes. The dew point could be as low as minus 60. Minus, so the temperature has to get to minus 60 before it will freeze. But that can happen and it can still freeze. Yeah. What can you do about it? Well, besides those recommendations, there are other things. Some regulators come with what's called an environmental kit. They used to be called anti-freeze kits. Here's an example. This particular regulator that I've been working with, let me show you, looks like this. Here's the end, looks like this. And this is open to the water. There's a slot in there, and that's for adjusting the intermediate pressure. And there's a hole in there, and water can go in. Now, that doesn't matter too much, because that inner chamber is also sealed. But it does go in there, and it gets it cold, and the spring gets cold, and so on. So one thing you can do is you can take that regulator, and you see what they've done? Same regulator. Identical. What they've done is they put a rubber cap on the end. Look at it there. And underneath that rubber cap, they filled that space in there. Let me see if I can get that out. There it is. Oh, it's all wet. They filled that space in there. Oh, look at that. It's full of oil. Silicone oil. Yeah. And so now this regulator will still function perfectly well, but no water goes inside the regulator. This is, used to be called an anti-freeze kit, but you know what? Just to basically support what I've been trying to explain, they don't call it an anti-freeze kit anymore because it doesn't stop freezing. 
That's right. Keeping the water out of that first stage is a good idea. Hence the need, or, or hence th this antifreeze or all of environmental cap and oil and so on is a good idea. It keeps water out. It's a good idea. But it doesn't stop freezing. You know? It can still freeze based on the temperature, the moisture in the air that you put into your tank, and how you treat the tank, the air, and the regulator. Here's a modern regulator. Those are old. Here's a modern regulator, brand spanking new, out of the box. And this has, also has, I think you can see it there, Kevin, maybe, an environmental kit. You know, see? see? You see that plastic rubber? Can I move it? No, not really. It's a soft plastic. I can feel it. Maybe you can see it moving there. Soft plastic cap. And you can put oil in there, silicone oil, or something else. We used to use gin <laughs> in the Stone Age of diving, but now they have proper stuff oil. And they put it in there, and that so there's no openings into this regulator, like most regulators, and so water doesn't go in there. And this is modern, so that idea is still good. But really, guys, it all comes down to understanding that even if your regulator has an antifreeze kit, all environmental kit, whatever, and you take care of it, it can still freeze. There's never a guarantee. By the way, I should also mention that a good reason I did say that it's a good idea to have an all environmental kit, even though it won't stop it freezing. What's with that? Why? Doesn't that sound contrary? Not at all. Good idea because it also keeps out dirty water and salt water. Okay, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips here at Dive Source in Whitby. Talk to you soon.